VOC Department of Geology, VOC College, Pita Madam. So, um, <clears throat> good evening to all. So, in this session, I would like to share some of the information about uh, entrepreneurial entomology. <clears throat> See, though the insects are occupying the entire universe, except in few places, even ocean has insect, uh, only one insect that is halobotus, which belongs to the order Hemiptera. Am I audible, sir? Audible, madam? Hello? Am I yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, even in the ocean, we may be able to see some insects like halobotus, some species of uh, uh, genera halobotus belonging to the order. Uh, hemiptera. So, without insects, uh, we cannot uh, think of uh, even life in this universe. As uh, the famous scientist uh, Albert Einstein said once, uh, without honeybees, the human may not live beyond four years because uh, honeybees are the ultimate uh, pollinators for the production of food grains across the world. So such an, such an important component of our ecosystem, any sort of ecosystem, maybe pond, pond ecosystem or terrestrial forest ecosystem, whatever be the ecosystem, insects are everywhere. And regarding the biomass and numbers, they are dominating the world. So such an important component of our ecosystem, we are going to see in terms of uh, economy. And uh, 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 in a recent past, we have been talking about how we can earn money through insects. So that, that is coming under entrepreneurial zoology. Can we rear insects? Yeah, sure, we can rear insects. Can we sell insects? Of course, people are there. We, uh, uh, around uh, 35 orders of insects are there in modern classification. But in a classical insect classification, which is around 29, some people are saying that it's about uh, 32 orders. Oh. Yeah. Some people are saying that insects has 32 orders, something like that. Insects might have originated long back. Uh, evolutionary biologists are saying that around 480 million years ago, insects might have evolved. But in a precise way, people are telling that it should be at least 400 million years back, uh, insects might have evolved. Uh, and uh, the longest living insects uh, would be called uh, queen termite. And uh, the age of the average age of queen termite would be around 40 to 50 years. Such a lengthier life uh, she is living in this world. So, if you just uh, imagine or if you just uh, talking about insects, uh, you may be astonished with a uh, lot of information. Uh, uh, before that, before uh, sharing the information on uh, entrepreneurial zoology, I would like to give some preamble or prelude about uh, insects so that uh, we may realize. Uh, what, how important the insects are. Uh, recently, people are uh, very much uh, fond of uh, studying biotechnology or immunology or genomics, something like that. But uh, people are not at all interested in studying classical subjects like uh, entomology, evolution, something like that. Okay? So in order to throw light on the importance of uh, uh, entomology and the entrepreneurial entomology, and uh, it is going to uh, take over the world. Even in food industry, insects play a vital role. Insects going to play a vital role. I'll show when I explain uh, through PowerPoint presentation. Uh, you may be wonder in Alabama, USA, United States of America, there is a statue on vivid, cotton bowl vivid. So that is the only statue on insect. Uh, which is there in Alabama. Uh, it, there is an interesting story behind that. Actually, that uh, uh, Mexican bowl worm, cotton bowl worm, is native to Mexico, where uh, it uh, devastated uh, the entire cotton field. But uh, in Alabama, that cotton bowl worm is considered as a 
invasive species. And uh, most of the farmers uh, lived in Alabama had a great loss due to this uh, boll weevil, cotton boll weevil. And uh, they just shifted the agriculture from cotton to peanuts, peanut cultivation. They started uh, uh, doing peanut cultivation because uh, it is not a pest of peanuts. So that they are if they were able to earn a lot of money through peanut harvestation or harvest, harvest. Hence, uh, they would like to uh, uh, erect a statue on that cotton boll weevil, which is native to uh, Mexico. And that is why we had a statue on that. In my uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, I have that uh, slide. I'll show. Uh, are you able to see the uh, presentation, sir? Man? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is the title. Then, um, yeah. Will it be on full slide? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, the famous name for insects would be hexapoda, which means hexa means six, poda means legs. So all the six legged uh, creations would be, see, if, if uh, the definition for insects would be having six legs. If you consider spider, it is not an insect. We often say it is an ethical puchi. It is not at all a puchi. So insect should have, should have six legs. So here, and uh, the population of uh, insects would be around approximately at a global stretch, uh, 1.5 million of beetles are there and 5.5 million of species of uh, insects are there. So you may be able to compare why uh, there is a specific place for beetles because uh, among insects, you know that in the animal kingdom, Arthropoda is the dominating group, or jointed legs. The animals which are having jointed legs. Arthro means jointed, poda means leg, arthropods. Arthropods are dominating group. Among arthropods, again, insects are dominating. Among insects, uh, beetles are dominating group. So for a simple imagination, if you just place beetle one after another on the earth, uh, we still have heaps and heaps of beetles to on. So, such a huge number of uh, uh, individuals or beetles are there, are living in this world. That is why beetles have a uh, uh, role in uh, the universe. 1.5 million species of beetles, 5.5 million species of uh, insects are living there. Of course, uh, other uh, uh, are coming under uh, terrestrial arthropods. About uh, 7 million species of uh, arthropods are the third dominating group uh, inhabiting in this world. So this is the uh, uh, phylogenetic tree of uh, different uh, groups of insects. Uh, as I said earlier, we have uh, uh, at least 29 orders of insects in modern classification, which is around, it will be around 35. So, with the, so this is only a, a, a picture about uh, what sort of uh, orders are there in the insects. So for our understanding, what are the varieties, diversified insects are there across the world, like uh, from stick-like insects to the Arabic, stoneflies, lithopra, tree cricket, dragonflies, uh, homophyrins, of course, it is uh, hemiphyrins are a few uh, phyla, uh, sorry, the two others, heteroptera and the homophyra. Hemiphyra is having two suborders like the homophyra and the heteroptera. So it is one among that. Kaisenura, uh, 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 you know that it will be classified into two groups, winged insects and wingless insects, the terigota and the aterigota. Terigota means uh, uh, winged insects, aterigota means wingless insects. You may be able to see wingless insects even in your books like uh, silverfish or kaisenaptera. Uh, mosquitoes, butterflies, stink bugs, uh, scrap beetle, thrips, uh, cat flea or rat flea. So several kind of uh, insects are there. So for a simple example, I just depicted this picture so that you know the different sizes and different shapes of uh, the insects. Of course, in every field, uh, there will be a father. And uh, the father of entomology is William Kirby. 
uh, he lived between uh, 1759 to 1850, almost uh, 90 uh, plus uh, years. He, he was the one when like uh, uh, described several books and publications on insects. That is why we have been considered to be Kirby as a father of uh, entomology. But in a history, we give specific place to Aristotle because uh, he uh, introduced the term entomology. And I, though he is a father of zoology, uh, William Kirby has been considered as a father of uh, entomology. If there is a father, mother will be there. And uh, she is the Maria Sibylla Merian, who is the mother of uh, entomology, because uh, she concentrates on the life history of butterflies, right? how the caterpillar is becoming butterfly, something like that. She dedicated almost uh, all of her life uh, in studying the metamorphosis of butterflies. Not only that, she was a good artist. She hails from a good artistic family. So, uh, All the see uh, you can see the from the plant the caterpillar and the other caterpillar. So the, the, if you have a family is an artistic family, so that she is very key pages of uh, Lepidoptera. The hands uh, she has been considered as the mother of her entomology. So with this prelude, I am going to uh, give uh, details regarding entrepreneurial uh, entomology. Yeah, you may be able to see. Uh, the people are saying around 40% of the world's agricultural crops are lost uh, due to pest attack. So you just imagine, consider the country like India. So Indians, India is an agricultural country and around 55% of Indian people are depending on agriculture and they are all facing pest problems. As Namalwar said, uh, pest is not a correct term for insects because uh, they are feeding on the plants, on their own host plants. See, whatever the term uh, introduced in scientific arena, it would be based anthropocentric, which means uh, based on man and uh, his belongings. We categorized that it is beneficial to us or harmful to us, something like that. But in, uh, you know that in, a, in a human evolution, we may be living around uh, two lakh of years. And uh, initial woman, uh, whose name Adita in Tamil Nadu, uh, her name is Ardi Pitikas Ramides. So the mother of all human beings would be Ardi. And uh, she might have lived long back, maybe around 4.3 billion years ago. But the insects are living uh, right from 400 million years ago. So such a uh, such a famous paleo history is there with the insects. Uh, whenever the people started doing agriculture, the insect population goes up. So wherever the food is available more, automatically insect population will be more. In that case, uh, yeah, of course, diversity was already there. Diversity was already there, but the abundance came after uh, the human practiced agriculture. So that is the main uh, main uh, reason for uh, booming of uh, insects uh, across India or across the world to the extent. Uh, not only that, I have been talking about uh, uh, invasive pests. No more? Okay. So, uh, not only that, uh, insects can travel. Uh, you might have heard about the butterfly migration, especially monarch butterflies may able to travel for about 7,000 kilometers. In, Af in America, you may be able to see uh, such a migration. So, uh, and uh, within that migration, they pass on several generations. So, not, not see uh, uh, the population who started migration may be different, uh, 
and uh, the population which reaches the destination may be different. So it might have, uh, they might have crossed uh, several uh, generations uh, after the migration. So uh, migration, not only the butterflies, but also other species. See, there are some trips. Uh, they may travel from South, South China to uh, 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 North India. So North India, North, uh, uh, Northeast India. So they may travel uh, such a long distance and cause severe damage to the agriculture crops. And the uh, FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization, estimated that there are at least uh, $70 billion annually. So we are incurring loss uh, at about uh, $70 billion annually. So that is a report uh, given by United Nations FAO. So such a loss. So that, that is also considered as an uh, entrepreneurial aspect because uh, whether we are going to earn or whether we are going to earn money or we are going to lose money. So the, uh, ultimately that comes under economy. So uh, how economy, how an insect or insect population cause economic loss. So in agriculture, we have a famous terms like uh, economic injury level and economic threshold level. And people are often advising uh, the agricultural people if the expenses on pest control exceeds 15%, uh, don't do agriculture. So it depends how the population goes up. You might have heard about uh, 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 grasshopper migration through uh, Tiber Polum uh, Canal and reaches Rajasthan. So such a, such a massive invasion uh, would occur even in uh, grasshoppers and even in pest population of uh, agriculture uh, practices. So uh, as per uh, FAO's uh, calculation, it will be around $70 billion per annum. So that is another important thing we must uh, uh, notice. So the damage from plant pest leaves millions of people without enough food to eat. You know that in India itself, uh, there are about 30 million people going without taking food in every day. So it may, may be, of course, uh, there is an another system, the FDA, uh, PDS, public distribution system, where uh, the stored pest causing a lot of damage to uh, the stored grain uh, and uh, thereby we, uh, uh, the people are forced to go for uh, uh, starvation. So that is another thing. Another thing. See, uh, so we, we must correlate uh, the production of grains and uh, uh, reaching of uh, grains to the stakeholders. So we must consider how economic class is incurred by uh, the system. And not only that, the scientific review analyzed 15 plant fish and found that uh, uh, climate change will increase the risk of fish spreading in agriculture. I'll, I'll come to the uh, matter uh, uh, after some time because uh, that climate change also play a vital role in uh, crop production and the uh, economy. So this is uh, this is a very uh, short introduction about uh, how insects are uh, either beneficial or uh, harmful to the economy. So this is the uh, chart uh, showing uh, the loss incurred by fish to the different agriculturally valuable crop loss. See, rice is the worst effector than wheat. Soybean, maize, groundnut, green grab, sorghum, mustard, sesame, pearl vegetables. So these are all the food grains, uh, and uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, using lot of money by the insect fish of. Uh, so this is the data around the world. And as I said in the, uh, uh, as I said in previous, uh, so this is the weevil. Uh, the name was uh, Anthonomus grandis. The, a woman holding a weevil on the top of uh, the statue, you may be able to see that uh, bowl weevil. Weevil belongs to the order Coriatida. It has a projected snout, that is why it got the name weevil, the cotton bowl weevil. And uh, it has been offered, often referred as Mexican cotton bowl weevil. So it is an indigenous fish uh, uh, of Mexico, but it has appeared in Alabama in 1915. By 1918, farmers were losing whole crops of cotton. Then they shifted uh, to uh, peanut cultivation. They, they, they just dropped the cultivation of cotton. Then uh, the economy were uh, uh, revert back 
so that they wanted to honor uh, the vegan so that they erected a, a statue for them so as we popularly uh, say beneficial insects of course uh, you know that uh, apiculture sericulture black culture uh, something like that uh, and the insects of uh, aesthetic uh, value insect uh, insects as medicine insects as, as uh, uh, scavengers insects as uh, insects as uh, uh, weed killers something like that so these are all coming under beneficial insects okay uh, beneficial insects have behaviors which directly stimulate the health of the garden if, if it is concerned with the garden or uh, uh, the carbon sequestration something like that so we are categorizing beneficial insects into two groups eh? one is positive uh, the, uh, how positive behaviors help in terms of pollination preying on harmful insects that will be coming under positive behaviors of a beneficial insects negative behaviors may be uh, it may be on the fish and causing economical damage to the uh, agriculturally valuable crop lands damaging vegetation land growth and diseases so this is the general classification Uh, about how insects are beneficial to the human health uh, i am going to show a list of uh, uh, insects uh, which will help the human beings in several ways of course so the lady bug I, i i just wanted to show how many types of insects are there how they are helping the human beings so such a list of uh, insects i am going to uh, depict uh, uh, through information highway so this is lady bug you need not worry about uh, the uh, 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 zoological name of that i'm simply uh, giving the information about the, the common names of uh, uh, insects and their benefits so this has been considered as uh, uh, soft body uh, see uh, they they are actually killing or devouring the insects like aphids you know that aphids mafia mealy bug and we have been incurring heavy loss in mango plantations mango tree mango bangra is a very good example so aphids are uh, uh, controlled by uh, these lady bugs uh, scale insects uh, mealy bugs uh, and mites so it is a benefit beneficial insect uh, by killing the pest species so somehow or other we are getting benefit and this is a big eyed bug they will be prey on small caterpillars mites thrips white flies uh, aphids and other soft body insects uh, so it is an indirect benefit we are getting out of a, a big eye uh, yeah uh, people are started uh, uh, rearing such insects in an artificial way so that it can be introduced uh, uh, to the field. you may be knowing uh, a famous parasitoid called the uh, trichogramma viridis hymenopteran pet parasite uh, so that can be commercially produced commercially produced in madurai near alanganallur we have a research unit uh, they uh, produce uh, this trichogramma viridis in a large scale and uh, supply to the sugarcane farmers so that uh, they will just uh, 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 inoculate uh, such uh, uh, hymenopteran pet parasites in the token for what the sugarcane field so that uh, they may parasitize on uh, the pest uh, eggs of uh, pest species of uh, lepidoptera coleoptera and other kind of order so that uh, commercial production of uh, uh, pest control insects is uh, getting popularized now uh, getting momentum gaining momentum uh, nowadays and the large scale uh, rearing of uh, uh, such insects uh, are uh, very famous among uh, the area that massive production of sugar cane are there and of course uh, by uh, starting this business government is giving subsidy to that also then there is then there is a damsel bug so both adults and nymphs feed on wide variety of insects including aphids leaf hoppers plant plant bugs or mites and the small caterpillars this this is also indirectly giving benefit to human beings then if this is minute pirate bug so that may prey on aphids chinch bugs white flies spider mites you uh, you we leave about spider mites but uh, uh, regarding uh, the pest uh, spider mites is a serious pest that is why it is a minute uh, pirate bug is controlling mites also uh, in an insect point of view it is very beneficial uh, not only that they are particularly attracted to colonies of thrips yeah we like pain tamil sollanga 
father of uh, trips dr p and anita krishnan of uh, entomology research institute alala college of course uh, he is no more now but he was he has been considered as a uh, father of uh, uh, trips india and uh, we have father of uh, uh, indian entomology uh, 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 and whose name is uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure but I'll tell you that not the same time. Okay. It's a minute pirate bug, then assassin bug. Yeah, this is a praying mantis. Of course, a lot of interesting news, uh, uh, interesting things about uh, praying mantis. Uh, after mating, that will devour the male uh, praying mantis. That is an interesting. Uh, even when uh, that that. Uh, uh, when the praying female praying mantis involved in uh, mating uh, the male should not have the head there then only uh, the mating was successful after mating uh, praying mantis will devour so such an interesting group of insects meant by the praying mantis and uh, they are uh, the good uh, predator on uh, uh, moths uh, crickets grasshoppers and flies but the uh, the only problem is they do not discriminate between beneficial and harmful insects they will devour all kind of insects that is the only uh, said that about for the thing then hungries there is a separate field on that agriculture and uh, several ngos non government organization who have been a single bee is in 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 her lifetime in her lifetime she may able to produce a teaspoon of honey but for that they have to visit the several thousands of flowers and people are estimating that it is it was around 40000 flowers they have to visit to take up pollen for pollen and the nectar uh, from the nectar and uh, pollen they may able to produce only a teaspoon full of uh, I mean, in our life, and what are these ten? So thousands and thousands of these. Your your bee colony may have a lack of one lakh of species. Maximum of a one lakh of a, uh, members. Eh? Maybe queen is a only one member, two drones, eh? and the remaining other members are worker bees. And worker bees are ultimately collecting uh, the honey from various plant sources and deposited on the beehives. So that is not only that. Bee venom. Bee venom is uh, it is very good for curing arthritis. Local uh, uh, healers are using uh, honey bees to heal uh, arthritis. Then uh, the bee uh, from uh, bee wax, uh, uh, soaps are being made by the uh, several uh, non-governmental organizations selling them. Yeah, of course, uh, they are also selling pollens collected by uh, bees itself. So it's a fantastic field and. Uh, It is giving lot of revenue uh, to the. Uh, there are several uh, uh, women uh, uh, groups uh, who are doing uh, honeybee rearing. In fact, the few are still there. There are more. And even in Madurai, uh, the, there is a famous uh, apiculturist named Josephen. She is doing lot of uh, work uh, related to honeybees, and she organized several NGOs. Now uh, 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 NGOs and. Uh, Uh, she has an outlet, honey outlet, a three-story building honey outlet. She is having, and uh, several types of uh, honey uh, is being um, meant for sale to the public. This is a lady, but yeah, of course, caterpillars also. You know that butterflies uh, are the very good pollinators. Thereby, it is giving revenue to the to the public. The mantle fly, of course, they feed on other mosquitoes and other aquatic insects. The dragon flies. There are a specific group called the cement tank, uh, cement tank breeders that will uh, uh, feed on mosquitoes, uh, even small fish. They they may do. Flies, midges, gnats. Then brown brown bathing. See. I, I, in, in order to show the diversified aspects of uh, insects, eh, I'm showing this these number of uh, flies in a in a flashlight. So brown lace wing, yeah, of course, uh, they feed on uh, mealy bugs, scales, and uh, other flies. Eh? 
the reciprocal flight. If it's uh, several, if it's are uh, the first two, several agricultural flights, so that is why it has been repeatedly connected. If it's there in six steps, then paper wise, but we know that uh, uh, in uh, Indian research science, CVS, Center for Ecological Science, there is a person called uh, Rather in the taker, who has been working on paper waste for about uh, 30 years. Recently, he got an international award for that. So it's an important group, paper waste. And uh, waste, especially fig waste, uh, they are also doing research on fig waste, and they spent uh, uh, her entire life in a uh, fig tree, fig fruit. Uh, so the in pollination of fig trees, uh, uh, waste are playing a tremendous role. And it is a, in, in a Pramidi, pra, uh, inverted Pramid, uh, they are the ultimate uh, important uh, member of the uh, inverted Pramid. Then parasitic wasps, parasitic humoids, several groups are there. They will parasitize, uh, they will parasitize on the eggs of uh, uh, economically valuable crops so that their population will be reduced in a greater way. Then European Arabic. Ground beating. Okay, so this is about how uh, indirectly the insects are giving revenue to the farmers. So that is the first aspect uh, we have been uh, looking at. Then uh, another famous uh, uh, field is there and giving a lot of revenue out of the insect meat. So again, FAO approved. Uh, 2,100 different species of insects as a food for human consumption. So you know that due to global warming and other uh, uh, kind of related parameters, uh, the crop productivity is getting declining down and down again. So in order to uh, produce or in order to rear insects in a simple way, say consider if it is a lepidopteran caterpillar, the maximum period for uh, the rearing of caterpillars would be around 40 days or 45 days. Even for uh, a paddy, we have to wait at least uh, uh, 120 to 140 days. After that, uh, uh, the processing would be there. And the players even on the salvo, and it may, be, it may be taking two years. So uh, come to the dining table, it will take around two years. Whereas if it is an insect meat, uh, we may be able to get them within a span of uh, 40 to 45 days. So. Uh, future meat would be insect meat. The people are telling that future meat would be uh, insect meat. I will give you uh, uh, how many uh, insect food is available in the market, which country is uh, uh, propagating and uh, uh, famous for uh, insect meat. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one by one. So insect meat has a nutritional value similar to that of a regular meat. That is why insect meat is getting popular. Insects multiply rapidly and require less uh, time. So, uh, uh, so this field is again called entomophagy. Uh, this is a specific field uh, named, uh, called as entomophagy. Estimates of numbers of edible insect species consumed globally ranges from 1,000 to 2,000. These species include 235 butterflies and moths, 344 beetles, 313 ants and bees and wasps. All of them are belonging to Hymenoptera, beetles are. Uh, belonging to Coleoptera, Mars and the Butterfest, Lepidoptera, 239. Grasshopper, you might have heard about the biryani of grasshopper in Rajasthan in uh, uh, the uh, locust migration. 239 grasshoppers, crickets, and cockroaches. Uh, then 39 termites. You know that in ancient Tamil history, we are used to have easel, easel, so you know, easel plus milk plus uh, aval. Uh, highly protein is the diet. Uh, uh, it has been in practice uh, in the Tamil literature and Tamil culture. 39 termites uh, may be considered as an edible insect and 20 dragonflies, as well as cicadas, you know that. Uh, cicadas also uh, serving as an uh, insect meat and insect food. Uh, in uh, Gibbon wildlife, so this is the data getting from uh, Gibbon wildlife and Kuriasa. That study recorded a total of 44 different species, 44 genera and 36 families of animals, which are used for the treatment of work. So this is coming under ethnozoology. 
uh, and the, in that insects occupy the highest uses it was about uh, among ethnozoology 30.9% of uh, insects have been uh, considered as medicinal use medicinal value so followed by mammals fishes reptiles scientists and animals and yes of course further some two zoo therapeutic animals such as cat cockroach peregrine and american and praying mantis uh, mantis religiosa are used for the treatment of asthma so uh, uh, this is the another important thing we must uh, know about uh, and that that field is referred as uh, ethnozoology there is an another study in palakkad uh, ethnic flea healers uh, recorded uh, a total of 57 families uh, 60 of course uh, spending money towards uh, uh, allopathy has been reduced uh, by just going behind the traditional ethnozoologic uh, ethnozoologic practices or ethnic healers uh, from from them we are able to learn how many insect species are helpful in curing diseases uh, there is a famous uh, 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 famous uh, kind of uh, uh, practice in tamil nadu there is a beetle called milabaris fasciculata if you just catch that milabaris fasciculata from the joints uh, they may able to secrete the uh, golden fluids that golden though it is considered as a uh, pest uh, in some manner it will be beneficial to the human so that is the, gray, uh, the, 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 the golden fluid uh, from the milabaris fasciculata is a very good hair stimulant hair growth stimulant cantharidin so famous famous hair oil company and they have been using this uh, uh, milabaris fasciculata for getting compounds from them ஒரு <laughs> <laughs> Uh, eyeing insect protein they they have been concentrated on insect protein and uh, it has a very good uh, market about uh, 8 billion dollar market so uh, of course we are going to get benefited with this insect meat so these are all cricket and larva licket uh, licket lollipops lollipops are available and crispy uh, they they have been in practice people are uh, uh, consuming this kind of lollipops So the first one is larval uh, and lollipop, and uh, the remaining two cricket lollipops. And cricketies, that that is the food uh, item. The cricketies, uh, since this, uh, 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 so this is the pack, uh, and uh, it is cost about two point seven five dollar. And uh, larval worm snack, snacks, uh, so the name of the uh, snack, uh, it, it is also two point seven five dollars. and the uh, chocolate covered insects and people are saying that even in the chocolate available in the uh, regular markets uh, they do have remnants of uh, insect parts and we are consuming it but in uh, countries like cambodia philippines and uh, they have uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, chocolate covered insects uh, which has been popular among the uh, consumers so these are the uh, uh, edible insects uh, the meal worms uh, you know that insect candies uh, 92 cockroach eating photos uh, we will be uh, there are several several photos are there and uh, we i, I just uh, show some uh, uh, one uh, one woman is consuming that candy lollipops bug tips if you go to the hyperlink uh, that shows all sort of information about the uh, insect meat and insect food only thing is you must have a mind to uh, consume that if you show uh, some sort of uh, aversion you may not be able to utilize but uh, people are telling that there is no vegetarian there is no non vegetarian 
uh, it is not like that. What kind of uh, nutritious food we are going to take, that is important. What sort of nutrients we are supposed to have, well, either from plant or from the animal sources, we have to consume that. Otherwise, uh, we will be nutritionally deprived. So that uh, uh, try to develop the habit of eating insects so that uh, it will provide a lot of nutritious, a uh, lot of protein, a lot of uh, nutritious elements in it. So that uh, we must have, we must uh, uh, train in such a way to utilize insects in a better way. So biscuits are there, lollipops are there, candies are there, uh, sandwiches are there, uh, uh, the insect fries are there, something like that. So this is an official website for uh, uh, insect food. Yeah, of course, food and agricultural organization. But this is a web page of the uh, food and agricultural organization of the United Nations. Yeah, another important thing is that cockroach farms. A city in China is feeding a billion cockroach of cockroaches, 50 ton, tons of uh, kitchen scraps a day in an effort to help with urban waste. So cockroaches are employed in just disposing kitchen waste or food waste. They are, they are being largely messy, even in a single uh, room, 10 by 10 room, you may be able to rear lakhs and lakhs of cockroaches. Not only that, by uh, the urban waste or kitchen waste, uh, they may be able to see cockroaches are good in uh, utilizing any sort of carbon resources so that uh, they'll be employed in cleaning uh, kitchen waste and urban waste, urban biological waste. So cockroaches, and uh, of course, cockroach fries are available. Cockroach fries, fried cockroaches are available as insect meat. Uh, Apart from that, they will be good in uh, disposing the uh, kitchen waste and the organic waste. So there are a lot of uh, towns uh, they have been involved in uh, uh, having uh, or rearing cockroaches, and they have cockroach farm, uh, farms also in Jinan, China. Then. Uh, and how much they are earning, uh, how many or millions of yuan they are, they, they are earning from cockroaches. So the cockroaches are uh, very good food for uh, feed for uh, pigs. Uh, so that will be pigs and the uh, pig farms and fisheries. They export them. They just uh, sell, uh, sell uh, uh, cockroaches to the pig farms and fisheries as their feed. And of course, uh, yeah, uh, for uh, some, for they are getting some medicinal ingredients. They have been using uh, drug companies are using uh, cockroaches. So he was a, a, a farmer, a mobile phone vendor. Now he invested a million yuan in cockroaches, which he sells to pig farms and fisheries as feed and to drug companies as medicinal ingredients. So they are popularly earning money from the cockroaches. So we have a more filled with water and fish, he said. If the cockroaches escape, they will fail from the fish to eat them all. So or can be feed by the fishes. And uh, another important uh, uh, insect use in biotechnology. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, Bombyx Mary, the cell phone, Bombyx Mary Meridian analysis. It's a promising model in helping health, safety, and environmental pollution assessment due to their sensitivity to chemical compounds like pesticides, drugs, and heavy metals. So you know that uh, being a lepidopter and uh, a they lab, their uh, span would be around 35 to 40 days. So within that, uh, we will be knowing whatever the repercussions uh, uh, we are we may going to get. Uh, by the exposure of uh, pesticides, drugs, and heavy metals to the environment. So we may able to analyze through them. Not only that, by cloning, with the cloning of uh, genes into the silk worm, 
been able to harvest the novel proteins by rearing silkworms. That is another. Silkworm as a bioreactor is a famous term. For even uh, insulin production would be possible by cloning insulin gene with the. Uh, so now, popularly, we have been cloning uh, insulin gene in E. coli, and uh, we we got the name humulin, uh, and it is famous in uh, pharmacological industries. We may also produce uh, insulin through cell uh, phones, even transgenic cow, uh, uh, or the insect. Now, with the insect genes from uh, uh, sorry, genes from insects can be cloned in uh, other popularly uh, farm animals, and we may able to get uh, through milk. Uh, Or whatever the means, we may be able to get the ingredients which are beneficial to the human thing. Uh, another important uh, 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 the thing is that bees can see ultraviolet wavelengths. Bees can identify flowers by UV banding. How we are seeing, how bees are seeing, and uh, due to global warming, uh, the intensity of colors is being reduced. Uh, And the other uh, parameters also influence uh, the uh, the structure of flowers, so that uh, bees may not able to identify their host, their host flowers, so that uh, pollen this pollination service will be will get diminished. Not only that, but the ultimate bee products are also uh, uh, getting dark. So uh, global warming is a serious problem for the insect population, especially for uh, the insects. Which are beneficial to human beings, as I mentioned earlier, as per uh, as uh, Albert Einstein said, uh, bees are very vital for human survival. So that 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 is to be seriously considered. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, this is the hard subject, uh, and it requires a lot of uh, preparation. Thank you. Dear participants, the session is open for all. If you have any queries, you may please ask. Hello, sir. This is Rita Jairaj from Sala Maris, Chennai. Hello. Yes, ma'am. You are audible. Ah, thank you. I just want to know because on one yeah. hand we hear about uh, the economic importance of insects, and yes. now uh, when we talk about insect meat, even some insects like cockroaches have been included. Uh, my, uh, yes. you know, uh, yeah. view is uh, can there be you know any diseases that can be transmitted when we are looking into only the protein part of it? Should we not uh, take a little caution with regard to, in case it is a vector for some, uh, you know, carrying some pathogen? How will we come to know? That is my question. Yes, yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The, so for insect meat, they have been, they have not been used uh, any vector species. So we need not worry about that. And uh, uh, so, so as I mentioned earlier, there are about two thousand hundred species of insects that uh, have been considered as an insect meat by food and uh, Uh, agriculture organization united nations food and agriculture so it's a uh, approved uh, insect species that are meant to be a insect meat after uh, uh, 10 to 15 years of research uh, they declare they were declared that uh, uh, these are the uh, species which have the uh, quality of uh, uh, insect meat uh, and it is approved by uh, fao united nations fao so you need not uh, Uh, worry about that. Uh, so the vector species are not uh, used. Uh, for, uh, even uh, if it is killed, uh, there is no chance of transmitting any sort of pathogen. Uh, yeah, vector species not at all considered as an insect meat. Thank Any other queries? Uh, sir, you have a query in the chat box. Uh, sir, can we ca cultivate which type of insect for consumable, easy, and as well as economic value in India? Yeah, mealworms are popular. 
you you know, get culture from the house itself the meal comes yeah even in the top floors if you have uh, integrated integrated dining facilities uh, you may able to uh, rear top floors also and uh, there is an estimate that around uh, uh, any sort of functions any sort of uh, marriage halls uh, uh, almost 30% of its food uh, food uh, 30% of food is being wasted so that food can be utilized for uh, uh, piggery farms and the uh, insect farms in india we are not that practicing such a thing uh, slowly uh, we may have to go for that business unless uh, if you are not uh, reluctant about starting business insect business chinese people are uh, uh, pioneer in uh, having such kind of uh, insect factory here yeah? but we are reluctant to start in that if we if people are starting we may be impressed and uh, we may also start uh, such kind of farms nothing wrong with it it is not causing any sort of pollution to the uh, environment it of course it is a good uh, practice for indians thank you sir uh, there is one more question also sir uh, they are asking is there any training centers which are available in india No, I say I, I, that is that, that is that is the pathetic uh, condition of uh, condition in India. Once uh, ERA is famous for uh, doing entomological research, Father uh, uh, Ignasi Muthu is doing a lot of uh, research on mosquito control and other things, plant-based mosquito control. Uh, like that. Now, uh, yes, yes. very few uh, entomological centers are there. You know that as a people from ICM are in this. Species of silkworm. Uh, they have been uh, having a center called Center for Research in Medical Entomology. They have been concentrating on uh, medical uh, importance of uh, insects of medical importance. Eh? But uh, 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 people ask, "Is agriculture people should encourage?" We are seeing in agriculture, PNA, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, there is a separate department, entomology department. Of course, uh, Forest Research Institute uh, is also having uh, entomology divisions. Eh? If they uh, if they started such kind of uh, training to the people who are interested in uh, rearing insects, uh, that would be better. Uh, we have to uh, uh, encourage such kind of practices, and we have to intimate uh, this kind of information to the government so that uh, slowly they will gain popularity. Uh, right now, we don't have such a big uh, kind of practice in uh, our region in India. And we, we slowly we have to start. The people like the entomologists uh, must show interest and uh, give training to them, uh, to the entrepreneurs, uh, so that uh, uh, they start uh, doing farming. Yeah, it is it's very cheap, uh, inexpensive, and very cheap. Uh, uh, a single room is enough for uh, doing such farms. And uh, there must be an attitude change. Uh, 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 like say India, uh, countries like China, Taiwan, Cambodia, Philippines, uh, they uh, the people are. Uh, Uh, fond of consuming insect candies and other things, but uh, here we are reluctant in consuming uh, such kind of uh, products. Uh, if we have the guts to consume that, then uh, this field uh, may gain importance and popularity. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Sir. Yeah, I am yes. Dr. Dr. Indra from Kadalu, sir. Uh, uh, um, you have mentioned about uh, carbon sequestration. In what way it uh, uh, it will uh, it, it will uh, place uh, carbon sequestration? Or... Yeah, the carbon sequestration uh, is different, uh -huh. eh? but uh, if, uh, yeah, of course, carbon sequestration is also have a point that if the fresh population consuming chlorophylls of the plant. Uh, the greater part carbon sequestration part will get reduced so that uh, indirectly uh, that will be uh, responsible for uh, uh, carbon sequestration something like that that there is a block in uh, uh, carbon sequestration in a negative sense in a positive sense uh, global warming uh, leads to some sort of confusion in identifying the pollinated plants by the host especially bees and butterflies in both the ways uh, Uh, global warming affect the insect population thereby you are uh, uh, losing them. Yeah. okay so thank thank is there any other queries
What is your suggestion about nanoparticle contained pesticide on crops? It's a question in the chat box. Sir. Pardon me? Nanoparticles? Nanoparticles contain pesticides on crops. Yeah, I'm not uh, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that field. Though. So that uh, I don't know about the nanoparticles much. Here. So that I don't have any sort of answer for this. Okay. Of course, nanoplastics are there, microplastics are there. And uh, stud uh, studies on such nanoparticles on insects, which means scanty, so that uh, we are not in a position to say about yeah, curing uh, diseases among fishes, they have been using nanoparticles. But on insects, uh, uh, such studies are scanty. Okay, so I am not in a position to explain that. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, any other queries, participants? Participants, you may, you may post your queries in the chat box. Any other queries? Dear participants, sir is available with us. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat box. Okay, no questions, I think, so, ma. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So let's make the end of today's afternoon session with a of thanks and appreciation and gratitude to all those who participated here. May I now call upon Dr. J. Shoba, Assistant Professor, Department of Zoology, Rio Chidamman College, to propose the word of thanks. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, it has been a great day for all of us. Our session has thrown light on many, many newer things. We thank our Almighty for raising this great occasion. We sincerely thank our Honorable Secretary Sir and our Principal Sir for guiding us and helping us. We proposedly thank Dr. Tinaran Sir for his illuminous address, which was well received by here. Once again, thank you, Sir. We regret our gratitude to our HOD, Dr. D. Radhika, ma'am, for the lessness service rendered. We honor, honestly thank the organization secretary, Dr. D. Geeta, ma'am, for her tireless efforts to make it a grant one. We also thank all the staff members of the Solid Department, VOC College. Staff of VOC College and other colleges for their active participation. Thanks again. Thanks to once again. Thank you. Thank you, dear ma'am, for your kind words of acknowledgement. Uh, participants, the feedback link have been posted in the chat box. Kindly